let's take a look at how we can determine the location and size of images in concave or converging mirrors. Uh, before doing this, you need to have uh, taken a look at the previous lesson, which was the introduction to curved mirrors. So in general rules, we only need two of the four um, patterns that we saw in the previous lesson to determine where the image is going to result in either a concave or a convex mirror. So for our concave mirror, we're going to choose just the easiest ones, um, ones that don't require a protractor, which is the one going through V, and then ones that use um, easy ideas like coming in parallel and going through F. So those are the two we're going to focus on, and we're going to be able to come up with our salt table, which is our description of the image based on what we find out. So first things first is we're going to draw our first line, which is going to come from the top of the object uh, parallel to the principal axis, and it's going to make contact with our mirror. Next step is that because that one's coming in parallel, the resultant ray is going to go through our F. So there is the first um, set of rays that's going to help us determine where the object and the image is going to result. So the next one that we're going to choose is if we take our um, object and we draw a ray that goes through F, hits our mirror, if you remember from the previous lesson, it's going to come out parallel to the principal axis, which means it's going to come out something like this. Um, where these lines intersect is where the answer is ultimately going to be. So we always draw our image starting at the principal axis and going towards the point of intersection, which means our image is going to start here, and it's going to point down, and we're going to draw the arrowhead like that. So uh, the last part of a question like this would be, what is the salt table? Because that is going to characterize the four important characteristics of the image for us. So we're going to compare our image to the object. The image in this case, uh, the size is smaller. The attitude meaning is it upright or inverted? It's inverted, obviously, since it's pointing in a different direction than the object is. The location we're going to define as uh, where it is relative to our key points. So the location for this one is going to be written as between C and F. And the type of image here is known as a real image because it's made up purely of these solid lines. Uh, there's no dotted lines like we saw um, for some of our convex examples uh, in the previous um, lesson. So what happens now if we move our object to a different location? So our object is now exactly at C, and it's intentionally put there. So let's draw um, our rays here. So the first ray, we recall, comes in parallel to the principal axis, and then it starts at the principal axis and goes through F. And the second ray we're going to draw is going to start again at the object, go through F, and then come out parallel uh, of, from the principal axis. So in this case, we can see that our object is going to be somewhere around here. And you'll notice it's not quite um, exactly where I want it to be. And that's just kind of working, working errors that will happen. It's not exactly where it should be. It should be exactly at C. And if you took a ruler and measured the heights of the arrows, it should be exactly the same. So the size in this case is going to be the same. The attitude is, again, inverted because the object is pointing down when the image is pointing up. The location is at C, and the type of image is a real image. So again, we're moving our object a little bit closer and closer uh, to the vertex. So in this case, when we draw our principal or our parallel line, it's going to again hit the mirror and then come out through F. The second line we're going to draw is going to go through F and then come out parallel. And you're going to see that the answer is way behind C. So obviously this one, um, we can tell that it's significantly bigger than the previous examples, and especially than our object. So in this case, our size is bigger. It's still inverted. So the image is still upside down compared to the object. The location, we'll say, is beyond, or you can say behind C. And we still have a real image. We will see an example where we have um, a virtual image later on.
So now we move the object so that it's exactly on F, the focus or the focal point. Um, here we're going to have to uh, be a little bit of be a little bit creative. So we're going to start as always by going parallel, and then we're going to go through F like we normally have. And if you are kind of thinking ahead here, you'll realize that I can't do what I've normally done and draw a line that goes from the object through F and then hits the mirror. It's not possible because um, I can't draw a line that goes anywhere like this through F and then hits the mirror. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a different one of our four options. We're going to draw a line that goes from the object through V, our vertex, and then back out again. And again, if you're kind of keen-eyed here, you'll realize that uh, those, the red line and the yellow line kind of look like they're parallel. Um, and if they're parallel, they're never going to cross. So OK, maybe they are parallel, maybe they're not. We're not sure. Um, a way to check that is to just take the lines back a little bit further. So what we'll do is we're going to take the line back behind the mirror just to make sure that we're not crazy and the lines indeed are parallel. So if we drew the red line there and the yellow line there, we can see that, OK, if we follow the same trajectory, yeah, it really does look like these lines are parallel, meaning that they're never going to cross. And that is actually what the case is going to be. So when the object is at F, exactly at F, um, there is no image. Because the reflected lines are parallel, they never intersect, meaning that we can't form an image. So uh, for your salt table, what you would just say is that there's no image. The fifth and last scenario here is if the object is between F and V. So we're getting a little bit closer and closer now to the mirror. We're going to start as we always do and draw a line that is parallel to the principal axis and then a line that goes through F. Now, it's OK that it crosses the object. We're going to kind of deal with that a little bit later. Uh, next up is what we would typically do is draw a line that goes through F and then goes through the mirror. But again, if you're paying attention, I can't draw a line that goes towards F and then intersects the mirror because I'm going the wrong way. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pick up um, two of our other options. So one of them was if we draw a line that goes through C and then through the object, that it'll just reflect back on top of C again. So we can do that uh, very easily. We can draw a line that goes through C, and we can take it back as far as we want to go. Um, and you might notice that, OK, it doesn't look like the red and blue lines are going to intersect. Maybe we've made a mistake, but let's keep going. Let's draw another one where it starts off at the object and goes through V, our vertex, and then again um, bounces out from V at the same angle. So if you're going to do this, it's really important that you do use a protractor. And we're going to see here that the lines don't look like they're ever going to cross. They're all diverging, meaning they're moving away from each other. So obviously, these lines are never going to cross. So what we're going to do for this specific case, kind of like what we did in the previous one, is we're going to take our lines back a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend our red, blue, and yellow lines all behind the mirror. And we're going to see uh, if maybe that gives us something else to work with. So I'm going to draw these back here. And I've drawn them faintly. Uh, I'm going to go over them later uh, and draw them as dotted lines, just so we can see exactly uh, what's happening. And if we've done this correctly, um, all three lines should actually intersect at one point or close to one point. Now, I've kind of cheating a little bit here uh, because I didn't use a protractor. And then what I can do just to uh, make it a little bit more clear is I'll go over these as dotted lines so we can see exactly where the lines are traveling. If you use a protractor and do this properly, you won't have um, to kind of cheat like I did to get the answer. OK, so our fake lines, our dotted lines, do indeed intersect somewhere. So that means we can fill out a salt table. So I'm going to draw my object's image right back here. So let's fill the salt table, and we'll talk about um, a couple things here. So the size is obviously bigger. This is a unique example because the attitude is upright, meaning that it's pointing in the same direction as our object. The location, uh, you can say behind the mirror, or just behind the mirror. And this is where their type comes in. This is what's known as a virtual image. It's a virtual image because it's made up of this fake light. Obviously, the image 
you can't go behind the mirror to grab something. So it's known as a virtual image because the light that it's made up of is uh, what we've shown here as our working lines or our dotted lines. If you want to practice more with um, the location of the object and the resulting image and uh, all the different rules that we talked about, I would suggest you take a look at this gizmo on Explore Everything. Um, it's a great way just to kind of see what the patterns are uh, as you move the object closer to the vertex and then further away from the vertex. I highly suggest you take a look at the ray tracing gizmos as it allows you to uh, take an object, move it back and forth, and then see how the resulting images occur based on the location of the object relative to F, which is our focus, and then uh, closer to V and then closer to C. Here's a summary of all five of the different scenarios that we've talked about and um, what their different salt tables look like. You don't necessarily have to memorize this because it's really easy to figure them out as you've seen. You can just quickly draw the image, uh, figure out where it is, and then you can fill out size, attitude, location, and type based on uh, what you've drawn in your picture. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, get subscribed, leave a comment below, and check out our suggested videos. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future updates.